Did you have a first master, uh, someone, an artist who was a real inspiration for you? I learned about what art could be when I was going to the Chicago Art Institute as a child. And after my classes, I would walk around upstairs, particularly in the Impressionist galleries, looking at Degas, mm -hmm. Renoir, Toulouse-Lautrec, and particularly Georges Seurat's Grange. Someday, somebody will look at my color in relationship to the color opposite system that Seurat used in pointillism. But as much as I studied their work, I didn't notice there were no women artists. The second question is linked. It's about colors. How colors are important for you? Yes, I did, as I said. I did, as I've been saying, I did extensive color studies at the end of the 1960s to try and figure out how to use color. Um, sorry. No, you can keep on. Okay. I did extensive color studies in, in, at the end of the 1960s, looking at how to use color emotively. And my color book, which consists of over 70 drawings, is at the Getty Research Institute. And someday when somebody, as I said, studies it, they may look at it and understand its relationship to Seurat's grandeur. Wow, that's exciting. Could you give kind of introduction to this principle? Well, color opposites. Grandeur, the pointless system is based on color opposites. That's yes. why the color rah, rah, rah. Yes. And that's why the color rah, rah, rah in my work too. My, if you think about uh, some of my images, there are a lot of color opposition in there. Ah, so in all your works, in all the period, you follow this principle? What I developed myself. Yes, I follow, I yes, did, exactly. Yes, I was talking to Daniel about that, even though I uh, tried to excise any hint of gender from my work in the late, in the middle and late 60s in order to be taken seriously in the LA art scene, still I learned a lot by restricting myself to more formal, minimal elements. And I basically created the building blocks of my formal language during that time. So how to go for, from minimalism to um, representation? How does it work in your mind? Well, uh, that was one of the things the ICA show wanted to explore, my move from abstraction to figuration. But when I thought about it after I did this, I, I was doing this long interview with Alex Gartenfeld, the director for the catalog. And as I pointed out to him, because I was classically trained as a child, I started out as a representational artist. And when I went to UCLA, I was working representationally. I took a year off from school. I went to New York. I saw the early abstract expressionist work and I came back and I started trying to fuse abstraction and figuration and it got the, my professors at UCLA all upset because that was a really figurative tradition. And so it's not like I didn't have a tradition of representation. It was that I started to explore more abstraction and that was fine until I wanted to be more specific, like with the dinner party where I wanted to yes. make specific representations of women. And still I was using an abstract form language, but if somebody ever were to study the back of the needlework runners in the dinner party, which were not done chronologically because of how long it took to do the plates, they would see a gradual move from abstraction to figuration as the women's lives came more into view. And by the time I emerged from the dinner party, I was a representational artist again. Ah. So dinner party is a key work, not only because of the size, because, but also because of your change in your expression, right? Yes. But I mean, in terms of size, I mean, the, <laughs> The, um, as I said in the tour, the birth project consists of 85 works, some of which are as large as 22 feet long. So if you were to, if there were ever to be a 
full birth project show, which has never been, it would take up at least as much space as the dinner party does. The Holocaust project takes up 3,500 square feet. The dinner party takes up 5,000. My early work, which is going to be reviewed in Jeffrey Deitch's show in LA. When? In September, his gallery is 12,000 square feet and it will be filled with my early work. So mm -hmm. the dinner party is not the only big scale work in my career. But it's, it's the one which is shown now. I saw it's it permanently one housed. Ago. It's permanently housed. Yes. This is a very impressive work. It also represents 20% of the audience to the Brooklyn Museum. Ah, and I've seen there's a Judith place. Yes. <laughs> Did you like that? Of course. <laughs> I made a photo of it. <laughs> Last question, right? Isn't this six? No. Yes, it is. No, we, we need, need more, 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 no, more, no, more. No. We need a dinner party. So what is, um, could you, what, what does gender mean in art? Well, I think Lucy Lepard, the critic, said it best a long time ago. Uh, art has no gender, but artists do. And so the question is, can you be any gender and be who you are in art? What's your next dream? My next dream? is to live long enough to see my entire body of art enter the world because the ICA show is wonderful and happy as I am about it. It's only three decades and I'm entering my sixth decade of artwork making. So there's the Holocaust Project, there's resolutions, and there's 10 years of working in glass. Wow. And you were exhibiting in Nice last time? Yes, that was great, Geraldine Gourbet. Oh, I love Geraldine. She's going to be here tomorrow or maybe even tonight.